Hey everybody, Thrift Store Hacker back again, and uh, I managed to acquire this uh, little 26cc uh, weed whacker motor. Uh, the weed whacker part of it was uh, no longer in working condition, but I picked it up and I uh, put these little brackets down here with some bolts through them as a base. Oop. I bracketed so with the bolts on as a base. And uh, let me take that off really quick to expose the motor. Uh, you hear me drop that bolt on the floor? I'll look for it after the video. All right, I pull this off. And what we have right here is just the pull string attachment. You can see it spins around when I pull the cable. And we'll just set that aside. Now, ultimately, my goal with this motor is we're going to try to get it to run on some propane. And to have it run on propane, we're going to need to modify the carburetor. Now I've already modified this carburetor to run on propane or whatever I want to inject in it. And what I'll do is I'm going to just take it off. It's a really simple thing to do. I'm going to take it off and I'm going to show you guys how I modded this carburetor. There's really long bolts in here. It goes all the way to the, end of the, uh, the side of the engine block. Oop. All that falling over. So you can see there's a very small intake port on this. Like the intake port is only a couple of times bigger than the bolts that hold it on. But since it's a 26cc motor, it doesn't require a whole lot of air. And it really doesn't require a whole lot of fuel. Now the carburetor had this plate on it. I decided to keep it because if I need to play with uh, how much air we're injecting into the motor, let's take the other part of the carburetor off. How much air we're injecting into the motor here, I can use the choke flap and restrict the amount of air so it'll pull a little bit more propane. Or if I just have too much air and not enough propane, I can kind of choke it off a little bit and make the engine run a little slower. Now the carburetor here has been highly modified. Um, basically what I did is I took everything out of the internals of the carburetor. And this is just basically a block with a hole through it. I took the float assembly and stuff off the side, primer assembly. And then I drilled down through here to make a hole so I can put this piece of bike pump tube. Now this is one of those little, I found this at the dollar store, it's just one of those little bicycle and basketball pumps, but it had a line on it. And the most important part is it came with a, a basketball and football needle. And with that needle, I was able to chop the end off of it and make it just tall enough. Let's see if I can get my camera to focus on it here. You see that needle? Like right in there, right there at the edge of my thumb. That's the basketball needle. I cut it a little short. I wanted to inject almost to the center of the uh, combustion chamber. And then I glued everything down really good, used some RTV around it too to seal it. Uh, this was just sealed off flat, so the only where that you know, the only place that air can travel is through this hole to the other hole and down this pipe. So what we're gonna do is since we don't need to uh, mix uh, gasoline like we mix uh, propane, because gasoline has to be atomized and go into a fine spray and go into the motor, uh, this you're just injecting a gas with another gas. So we can put this back on the motor or the engine, just the way it is here. And I can just uh, put a few uh, put a few screws in this and put it back up on there. It's always good to do it anyway, so we don't lose our parts. As you can see, there are some other pieces on this carburetor, housings and whatnot, that made uh made this whole assembly a lot longer. So I had to put a couple of uh, nuts on the end of this uh, bolt here to get it to uh, clearance so it doesn't go too far into the engine block. So we'll just screw this back on really quick. Um, one of the things I've noticed too is if you're working on these weed whacker motors and they were made in the last couple of years, um, you're gonna need a uh, T20 Torx bit for them. 
Uh, they also have slots in them, if you see here, there's slots in them for a flathead screwdriver. Just in case, you know, you have a, the only thing you have in your pocket is a uh, pocket knife or uh, a flathead screwdriver. All right, now that we got that screwed on, what we can do is we have full control of the amount of air going into the motor using the choke flap. And there's a little tiny hole right here. I'll try to get a little closer to the camera. There's a little tiny hole right here that uh, I guess if you have it choked out, it's just enough to keep the engine idling and not to put too much pressure on the carburetor. But we can adjust our airflow there. And then for our propane, what I'm going to do is I got to go find a uh, something like an old camp stove or a uh, it's like camp stove or an old barbecue or something that runs on propane that we can get the uh, regulator that connects to the bottle and all of the little safety stuff connected all the way down to the burner of the stove. And it, I'm just going to go off of that we're using a camp stove. And if we have the camp stove, we'll take this and we'll run it down to the part of the uh, camp stove that has the on and off switch and it's going to the burner. And that'll allow us to have propane come safely out of the bottle into the mechanism, which we already know is a really solid mechanism because it's inside a camp stove. And then the part outputting from that valve out to the burner of the camp stove, we would just hook up to here. And that way we have a valve, uh, well, the on and off switch, uh, you know, controls the, the flame height. That'll allow us to control how much propane we have going into the motor. Because, as I was saying, this is a 26cc motor. It's probably uh, not going to take a whole lot of propane. And, you know, as per the air that it sucks in, it's only going to take in, I think, like 25% of it. It'll be propane, and the rest of it will be air. So coming down through that little basketball tube in there, working as a uh, fuel injector, should work perfectly for what I want to do with it. Um, another thing we might need to look into on this project is the ignition timing. Now with the ignition timing, let me find a prop here, there we go. With the ignition timing on a lot of these small motors, if I can zoom you in a little bit here, there we go, is there's a magnet on the side, which is usually in this area right here. And you hear the thing's got compression. I uh, accidentally left it on its side too long and it started dribbling oil on my counter. But uh, there's a magnet that's down in here, and when this spins around at speed, it goes across this coil here, and when that magnet comes across, it creates an electrical charge and sends a spark up to the spark plug that goes back here. Now, if I'm running propane, I don't know if I'm going to have to play with the ignition timing much, but I know if we're running like a, a HHO, which is uh, when you use electri uh, electricity to separate water and separate it into uh, uh, hydrogen and oxygen, you actually have to play with the ignition timing because it's uh, so volatile. But I think the propane, if I got to adjust the ignition timing, it's going to be a little tricky because the coil bolts on here and here. And the only way you can really play with that to have this come up at a whoo, have this come up at a certain time is if you either a move this a couple of degrees off in relation to the crankshaft. So you either get a couple of degrees four or a couple of degrees after, or I can take the bolts out of this and move it a couple of degrees over, a couple of degrees back until I figure out where I need it, and then figure out how to connect it down from there. I might be able to just use some thinner screws and some washers because, you know, we're only going millimeters over to get a, an extra, you know, maybe uh, one or two degrees of ignition timing. But this motor should work out pretty good. It's a four-stroke motor. Um, it's got an overhead cam on it, so I'll look up here, you can see the overhead cam here. And I bet I could even, if I raise my camera up, scoot my camera a little closer here and raise it up, I'll show you the rockers and the valve train in this one. Whoa! Drill's got a lot of torque. Spun that thing right around on me. 
Let's turn our motor back around here. If you look in there, a tiny set of rocker arms. And since I got it open, we can check the clearances on them. If I turn the motor around, you should be able to see the valve springs pretty good. Just like that. This motor does not want to stay standing. Okay. Zoom you in here. You can see the two tiny little valves, the intake and, let's see here, this would be the intake and this would be the exhaust valve. And when I spin the motor around, you can see them going up and down. I give them a quick little check here. It's not exact science, but give them a quick little check here while they're loose to make sure they uh, are clearanced well. It looks like they're clearanced really well. You can see the tiny little push rods behind them. But with this four-stroke overhead can or overhead valve motor, um, we should be able to get like maybe a, a half a brake horsepower out of it with a little modification, tweak the exhaust a little bit on it. If we can get a half a horsepower out of it, maybe we can go find ourselves a small motorcycle alternator or you know even a car alternator off of a really small car and see if we can uh, hook it up to here and have ourselves a little tiny gas-powered power station that might run, uh, you know, maybe uh, two hours on a gallon of gas, but enough to charge the batteries up on, say, the electric trike project. But uh, this is about where I'm with it right now. I need to go acquire some parts and find myself a camp stove or something I can gut the propane out of, and we'll come back to this project in the next video. Till then, if you like my channel, please subscribe. Uh, tell your friends about me. Let's get some more vi viewers on this channel. Uh, more viewers mean more avenue, ad revenue, which means I can actually spend money on these projects. But uh, I'm not holding my breath on a whole bunch of viewers. I do it for myself. If you guys like what I do, you know, feel free to comment. Um, if you have uh, questions, comments, or anything like that, feel free to uh, ask down in the comment section. Give me a thumbs up. Give me a thumbs down if you don't like my projects. Or anything I can I can deal with that. Uh, some people get really offended when they get their projects thumbs down. Hey, it's honest criticism. But anyway, you guys have a good afternoon, and we'll uh, keep plugging away on this project in another video.